Coming up, guys, we've got Alexis here who is loosely, he put a very big emphasis, loosely associated with the uh, Swiss crypto economics. And uh, he's going to be talking with us about the digital integrity of the human person. And I don't know about you, but I see a lot of human persons here. So I think this talk would be applicable to all of you. So why don't you let us know all about this? Give a hand. Thank you. I'm not loosely associated to the Swiss crypto economics table. I'm completely associated with them, but I, I they take no, yeah. Um, so uh, digital integrity of the human person, this is a um, project I've been working on for now a few years, and uh, it's been moving on in Switzerland, and so uh, it's a very new uh, legal concept. Uh, we might say it's a um, legal hacking, if you want, uh, approach that I have. Uh, but basically, just to keep you up to keep you up to date on, on how it's progressing and, it, and if you don't know, to give you a small insight of what kind of uh, digital right um, it is, the digital integrity of the human person, it's something which will naturally come, I think, and that's why it's, um, uh, it's being, start to be accepted in, the, in very uh, specific communities, but I'll, I'll come over there. So, um, yeah, where does it come from? It just it comes from uh, this um, uh, very strong opposition right now between people who think that uh, what is happening online, what is uh, in the digital space is part of the real life. Uh, so this is a famous quote from uh, Peter Sunder where he thinks, he doesn't talk about IRL because IRL in real life doesn't mean anything. For him, internet is also the real life, okay? And on the other side, you have this, uh, um, uh, industry and a lot of people, even from uh, the traditional uh, um, uh, uh, politi in politics, traditional people, they, they think data is the new oil. And you have a lot of minister of economy or whatever, which uh, try to push this industry of data to become a, a modern nation. And they their principle is that data is oil, which for me always felt wrong. So uh, data is new, not new. It's not the oil, and I had to f we had to find some way to counter uh, this. So the concept is very simple: is that uh, if you look in your physic in your digital uh, rights, in your fundamental digital rights, in many constitutions, uh, you have a right to your physical and mental integrity, and um, uh, f this is just ba basically the state says you are protected as a person, and uh, we need to extend this to the digital self to the digital realm. So basically, we just add one word. We say that the person is not just a body and a, and a mind, but it's also actually also its digital self. It's very, very, very simple. But it has some uh, very profound impact. It's based because if you look at why physical and mental, why your body and your mental state are protected in the constitution is in order for you to keep your autonomy as a human person, to be, to be able to act in the pe autonomously. If you are always tortured physically or mentally, then you are not free anymore, okay? So uh, here it's a bit the same idea is to say, okay, if, uh, if we want to be free people in the digital space also, then we need our full autonomy and we need to have our digital integrity protected or at least guaranteed to be protected by the, by the state authorities the same way. So it's just applying the same mechanism uh, to the, that was already existing, is already existing for your physical and, and mental state to apply this to the digital uh, part of you. Um, so um, that will also mean something which uh, was a, a feeling which I thought was not, was not good and, and, um, uh, and it was kind of hard to explain sometimes why it was not feeling good that harvesting data itself by nature is something that uh, is harming uh, is harming the digital I integrity of the person. And then, if you want to be able to um, harm the integrity of a person, you need its, his consent. It's the same way for your physical integrity. Your physical integrity, you allow people to harm you uh, if you give consent. You go to the hairdresser, it's actually the cutting part of your body, but you still give consent, you know, and it's a, so, um, and in some times, of course, you don't need your consent because if you are in an accident and the doctor needs to cut off your leg because he thinks he needs to cut off your leg, he will do so. He doesn't need your authorization. So there's the level of, of, of uh, uh, autonomy and, con and consent that you accept 
for harming your own integrity. But basically, this is the, the we just apply the same concept. So there are few major consequences of this in our, in our legal system is that basically it would appear in the right to life. In many constitutions, you have the right to live, you know, and the first thing is like uh, you, you cannot be killed and you have a right to be protected on your physical and mental uh, integrity. We would add it there. We will extend the, the legal notion of what life is would include also the digital part. Um, so one of the consequences also is that in the legal uh, perspective, it would put data in a different category. Today, data is undefined, and a lot of people use personal data. Use this. A lot of people use this gap to uh, take kind of ownership. You know. So this is why in uh, the whole industry, the digital industry, the fact of getting data is something which is. Normal, you can be owner, you can resell it. There's nothing that is forbidding you to do this because people don't consider, just consider this as an object. So if we start thinking that if you have a life, digital life also, you're extended to the digital self and you have a, integrity, a digital integrity, then what is building this uh, digital self of you uh, is not an object, cannot be sold. Like, you cannot sell a part of your body. You're not allowed to do so. So we would apply the same um, consequences. So this actually has already been um, said by the, uh, a group of um, authorities of data protection. Uh, they made a political declaration uh, in uh, two years, uh, in uh, 2018, uh, where they were saying that personal data are not objects, they're actually part of the human person. Um, and it also brings to another element is that uh, it's very hard for someone to understand where all the data that is making itself, himself, is. Uh, people don't have a good understanding and it's very hard to know exactly where is all my data and where all um, things can influence me. So. Uh, when I say that no, no law should assume this, is today we have built a lot of legal system, and even GDPR, which is the most uh, uh, pushy law in terms of data protection, starts from the point where, where it assumes that you know where your data is. You have to know where your data is so you can defend it. But in reality, it's a false assumption, and many laws use this. That's why you had uh, uh, Schrem with, face, with Facebook, when he had to go and f get his data, it took him two years with a big procedure, he had to go and fight against Facebook, and this is not something achievable by, uh, by, by anyone. So we have to assume not that you know where your data is, but that you don't know where your data is, and all the laws have to be built like this. So the fact that we create this digital integrity, even if you don't know where the data is, if, even if the data is not in your reach, you're still protected and you still have rights uh, based on data, that data. So, for example, um, what that concept would bring to GDPR, it's not incompatible, it's at a higher level. So, you have fundamental rights and GDPR is, a, is an implementation, is a very technical and legal implementation. And it would, uh, it would not be incompatible, you would have to do some adaptation. But what I was looking for is one very important article, the Article 2 of GDPR, if you read it, these are the exclusions. Why, where GDPR does not apply. And one of them is everything which is uh, related to security and to terrorism and to uh, financing of terrorism. And when you, when you see, so this is the state using your data to try to fight uh, terrorism. And I call it the, the, uh, the security black hole. Whenever you talk about security, the data is not important anymore. There's no more rights over there. Uh, but this is not true in the physical world. In the physical realm, uh, even if they're fighting terrorism, you each have your rights and you uh, cannot be jailed uh, um, without uh, process. And there's a, there's a whole rule. They cannot f beat you in the street in, 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 uh, in, in Europe right now just because they might think you're a terrorist. That's not how it, that's not how it works. So, but in the, in the digital space, yes. So basically, if we force the state and the, the, the fun, in the fundamental rights, the, all the constitution to respect your digital integrity, that means there would be no more, it should be in one of the consequences that the security black hole should disappear and the 
the police forces, when they are fighting for a crime, they have to respect the digital integrity of all the people which are around. So, we talk about constitution and law, and this is the decentralized, uh, critical decentralization cluster. Normally, a lot of people, uh, of us, we try to go um, above the law. We try to like be a good anarchist and try to uh, assume, well, to try to build the new rules of tomorrow and not to stick on the old ones. But here, I do assume, uh, I, I make an assertion that we, we keep the state at its current form, and we keep the laws and constitution, and, and I think in reality uh, it will evolve, but uh, we will still need some uh, uh, human laws, and, um, and, and this principle will help to uh, maybe transition to something else. But uh, it's basically using the existing legal framework and adapting it to be good for the uh, digital human, um, human society. So it still will help. Uh, to impose to the state to, to, to interact in a good way with this uh, digital, uh, with, 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 with this, its citizen. Uh, uh, not imposing uh, mass surveillance as a default, okay? Um, also, the other way around is the state needs to be in a position where it can provide the right tools, you know? Uh, for example, uh, most of us here, we do think that a peer-to-peer -peer network is something which is can be used for good and can be a use for. Uh, uh, it's a good place where we can uh, be transparent and anonymous as we want, uh, and it's a good place where we can interact between each other uh, respectfully to each other. We don't need to har harvest uh, millions of personal data to have a good relationship. For example, to pay something, we can do this without giving metadata, and this is good. Uh, and uh, the state should be actually uh, promoting its own interaction with the citizen in this way. Uh, uh, a government accepting a payment in crypto uh, or uh, providing or not providing but allowing its citizens to use self-sovereign dig digital identities and to develop tools that they communicate um, in, uh, in places where they can respect the privacy and that the government doesn't ask you for um, zillions of information which is not needed for what they need to do to you. So, when we talk about implementing this, basically there are a few places which are already now identified to implement, implement the, um, this, uh, this concept. Uh, the two main documents which people would know, I mean, the, that I'm interested in right now, is the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union, Article 3, uh, alias 1, and the Swiss Constitution, Article 10, um, where it's, it's, a, it's an article which says right to life, and the second part is that every person has the right to personal liberty, in particular to physical and mental integrity. So the idea is very simple, is that we just add the word digital to extend the, uh, the personhood to the digital uh, realm. Um, so, um, the work has um, gone very fast uh, these last uh, years and uh, we have the chance in Switzerland to have a, s a federal system where every uh, canton, every sub-state has its own constitution. So now there's a work uh, of one canton, which is the Valais canton, uh, that are renewing their whole constitution. And so we had the chance that to work with the uh, Commission of Fundamental Rights, so the people who are meant to rewrite just that part, and they, uh, they, the, the commission accepted the, um, uh, the, uh, the proposal, so they will not add the word next to the two first ones, they will make a second a phrase uh, which will be simple, uh, every person has right to digital uh, integrity uh, and, and this will be presented to the, uh, uh, to the whole uh, con uh, constitution assembly that will um, during this year and maybe we'll have the first real implementation in the local constitution of uh, this principle. Um, so I'm just going. So we uh, we um, it, it's getting uh, some attention, uh, especially from the um, uh, data protection uh, agencies. So we were uh, I was in Dakar uh, in front of the the whole group of the French-speaking uh, data protection agency uh, to present this, and we uh, we were already invited by the Swiss data protection officer to present um, this in uh, the the Swiss Day on data protection. Uh, the next event. Uh, are pretty interesting because we have one event in Neuchâtel in Switzerland where inside the law university they're making a half day uh, 
uh, colloquium on the on the topic and they're inviting um, teacher from different uh, branches, so international private right, a constitutional law, um, uh, this, um, privacy law and so on, and each of them is going to uh, kind of assess uh, this new right in their own domain and see uh, how um, uh, what, are, what, what it opens for uh, research possibilities. Um, there is a large uh, lobby group in Switzerland called Digitale Gesellschaft and uh, I will be presenting this in the Winter Congress for those of you who will be there. It will be roughly the same presentation as here. And then into the term of uh, future work, how it's uh, proceeding. Basically, we're um, writing an uh, essay about the topic uh, to go more deep, deep in the, in the, in the subject. Uh, hopefully with the University of Neuchâtel and other, there will be some legal research uh, starting. And what is really interesting in Switzerland is that we have a real uh, action, mode of action. So uh, we're going through different cantons and maybe at the federal level, depending on if we raise enough money. But basically we can ask, we can prepare initiative and try to propose this to the people to actually uh, add in their constitution. Uh, and we'll see, uh, so we have the example of Valis, which is through uh, redoing the constitution, but you can also push more uh, and uh, hopefully in some canton next year we'll have this kind of, of initiative. And then we try to do uh, websites, it for now is mostly in French, but basically this is where we have all the resources that we try to uh, collect on the, uh, on the topic. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, question, question, question. If someone has questions, of course. Yes. Thanks. I will stand up. Uh, what would be an example of something that would break your personal digital integrity? Um, so. Um, uh, so the best example, of course, is um, Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica, have you seen? Yeah, okay. So, so basically, here we're using data. You have no conscious. They're they're, they're modifying your, your your bubble, and at the end, you actually vote in a way. You act uh, in a way that you might have not decided yourself. Okay. Um, the this is this is a bit a, a kind of uh, extreme where you are pushed into doing something. Uh, but what I claim also is that just the fact of hosting the data. Um, and keeping it without you even knowing this, uh, this is basically already harming itself. Um, um, the, 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 the mental, the, um, to conceive the, a harm on your physical body is very easy, okay? You have this physical body and we're going to harm it. Um, on the mental state is already a bit more complex, you know? Uh, for example, um, uh, I cannot brainwash you, that would not be good, but I can sell you ads on TV all the time, that's okay, you know? I still try to influence your mental state. Um, and your, your, in your, your digital um, identity, uh, integrity, sorry, um, the, the amount of data that, is, um, that people can collect with you and the, the precision um, of, um, of your mental, your, your, yourself, the, the knowledge of yourself that can be gained is so big that it's bigger than yourself, you know, and it can be reused against you. So uh, there is, that's the main case that we're looking for, of course, is that uh, based on your profiling, uh, we know things that even you, you don't know, and by, by presenting them to you back, we can, influence the, we can influence you in a way that you have no clue, basically. That's the main case. Yes, hello. Uh, I have a question about terms. Um, yeah. What do you think about the term of the informational self, um, yeah. what is it called? <laughs> uh, uh, Self-determination, uh, which has been used in Germany before. Um, I think, uh, like digital, for example, we may face a future where digital is no more the thing. It may be uh, something else except uh, zeros and ones. Yeah. So perhaps on the long run, uh, the informational self-determination might be the better term okay so um, so there's first I'm going to give you another example because you, the two first words are physical and mental 
And actually, you have a lot of, if you go in details, you have a lot of differences. People that were not happy in Germany. Some, in Germany, maybe sometimes it's, uh, um, they use Geist, Geistige. Uh, so spirit, uh, in, in, um, in French, they say mental or psychique. There are some differences. So it doesn't matter about the word. It's, what it, it's, it's a more general concept. So what did... What is important is it's understandable by people. And so uh, in French, we had this also debate between numérique and digital, because now digital is becoming a word which is used for numérique. And a lot of people use digital, digital as digital. And uh, we still we say, no, numérique is the, if you talk to people, this is the most understandable. Um, and there was also the option about informational. But if you go in the street and you say, uh, if you look at what people say, they say, I have a digital life. I have a digital self. These are concepts where if you go to see your grandparents, they will be, uh, okay, I, am I already heard that. It's simple. If you go, yeah, I have an informational uh, a self um, that's more complicated, they don't realize what it is. That's my feeling. So it's more about what people in general would understand. Hi, uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, my question would be, uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah? Sorry? Do you hear me? Yeah, yes. I hear okay. you. <laughs> um, so there would be people who would argue with the uh, right to informational self-determination, yeah. but there's also the, the concept of uh, data ownership. And I think in uh, Switzerland, for example, there are um, like people in law science, Florent Touvenon, I think, is uh, writing lots about the data ownership, yes. and uh, so what? I think it's uh, it's a very uh, very uh, dangerous concept, but it's also it could be Which one? the data ownership concept. Yes. Okay. Um, so have you been talking with people who would argue against your concept yeah. with the data ownership, and what do you think about it? So, so, so indeed, yeah. Data ownership is um, actually there is two kind of people who promote data ownership. There is uh, people who say there's um, um, data is an object; it can be sold, and there is an ownership. And uh, let's make a business out of it. Okay, that's the first version of it. And the second second version of it is people say, oh, I have to find find a way to reclaim my data, so I will claim ownership on this data and I'll, tr I'll try to like rebuy it. Okay, uh, so they, have, they try to do a good way. Uh, the, the objective is the same, is how do we get back control of our, how do we control our digital life, how do we protect ourselves? Um, now, but if you accept that it's an object, that is still ownership, ownership can be transferred legally, you know? When you are in a fundamental right, a fundamental right cannot be transferred. It's uh, uh, um, even your body, you cannot sell your body. In French, there's a legal term which is called indisponible. L'indisponibilité, that means you cannot even make your body part of a contract. That would be against your uh, physical integrity, actually. You write physical integrity. So to be able to apply them, uh, I, I want, if we accept, even in, in a purpose of protecting ourselves, that we have data ownership and we rebuy this data, it doesn't protect us in the long term because we can always sell it back. And we will sell it back because the service that we get are so good with it, so easy because it's fucking complicated to be self-determined in the digital space, that we will sell it back easily. So, and this should not happen. So, removing it from ownership and it's something you cannot sell. It's it's part of yourself. It's a it's a part of your body and your con what constitutes your personhood. So yeah, I did speak to some of those, and it's quite conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's, there's this. So your argumentation or whether uh, human, uh, the human rights and the European Charter, yeah. so uh, your argument there. So, uh, but do we need it in the first step? Because I think with this argumentation, you can 
already do it because if you sell data, you can harm me in mental and physical. So yeah. you can uh, argue that with their standing rights now and uh, ma uh, make it sense to do it in a second step. So first, at okay. Uh, doing the long way through the through the law through the courts and say okay we're trying to do that now because it's already there so um, so this is how a right appears a right appears when people think they have this right and uh, and actually it takes time to appear and it, you don't have to wait until it's in uh, uh, written in the constitution to uh, to make it exist okay so uh, to make it exist you have to take talk about uh, your uh, digital life and your digital self to, to others and, and that you don't want to be harmed in your digital life. You want to be able to protect yourself. And by doing this, you're already pushing this principle, okay? Um, but then it's also, the, the fa but, but at the end, we still need to, at one point, write it down. This is my feeling. And, and this will come with stages, you know? For example, you can, let's say now you're in, in, a, in a judicial process about mismanaging, mismanagement of your data. Uh, then if you really think about this principle, you can immediately ask the judge about my digital integrity. Even though there is no law or no constitution, he should answer the question. Or he, today, I'm sure he will answer the question. So I'm also looking for some uh, cases in, uh, in Switzerland, legal cases, where we can push this argument, just saying, asking the question, is it a is it a is the fact that this company is uh, harvesting data on these people is this a threat to the digital integrity of those people? You just ask the question, and the judge has to say, "Well, maybe it does. Maybe you will say digital integ integrity does not exist." Okay, we'll ask next the next one. Yeah. So, uh, so thanks for all the support for the NIM project and more in the future. <laughs> but uh, on to this question, which is I think related. Uh, so I think like in Switzerland, like NIM is based on Switzerland. We've had a very good experience with the local government, uh, but that's not the case for many countries. Many countries have very corrupt governments, very adversarial governments. Uh, what should people in those countries do? And I guess if they're doing some form of technology, can you? is there any connection between kind of cryptographic integrity and this kind of more metaphysical notion of digital integrity that you have? Okay, just for full disclosure, he says thank you for the support because we're I'm I'm helping I'm helping Harry in his uh, in his project. So, uh, um, yeah. So 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 it is not first first thing. Uh, it's we're not talking about cryptography integrity. We're not talk about talking about uh, integrity in the sense you're doing a hash function of the human body. That doesn't. It's not like this. Huh? Uh, integrity of the human body is just is of the of the, of your of yourself. It's just that. Um, it's just a concept that allows, that forbids someone else to come and interfere with you. But we don't define how. This is society will define how we interf interfere in the future. Um, so, Switzerland, we can move move these uh, projects ahead, and we could talk about it, and it's good. And and basically, if it's also an argument we can start making, and people are careful. In other countries, it's not the case. So, in other countries, actually, uh, we have to do what history already did because. People already fought for their physical um, integrity, and they fought for their mental integrity. So this is a concept that started um, in the 18th century, you know, with the Lumière, and this is where, where it started. So basically, we need to do the same thing. We need to do what we're doing here: self-defense, using the tools, building the right tools, that, and and, and pushing them, pushing them. Um, and uh, and building those peer-to-peer -peer not networks and mastering cryptography and uh, and now building economy and this is why also which is great with crypto uh, and uh, the new consensus model and the incentive models that we have right now token economics all the thing which is crazy because now we start to have a uh, uh, yeah an economical power also in this using this these tools that represent uh, all this world of a free uh, of free digital selves that can build a society so yeah so yeah if you cannot push legally the thing then you just continue exactly what we're doing okay. thank you so much Alexis um, 
I, I would say that he would be available offstage to answer any other questions, but he has informed me that he does not like to consort with the masses and plebs, and so uh, that's not going to happen. I'm just kidding. He's going to be available offstage to answer any discussions that you guys have.